Hello chill computer guy. Today we're here in Reason 9.1. Are going to talk about this the tool window the f8 panel now this panel in the past i've complained about the fact that it doesn't have if it's not integrated into the interface it's still this floating panel but it is a very very underutilized uh, uh panel here in reason it does a lot of really really great things it has a lot of random variations that will really give your midi clips a more human feel and i highly recommend using it in your tracks. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have a track here and another great shortcut is whatever clip you have selected, if you hit the P, the capital letter P on the keyboard, it will loop that as well as play it. So I'm gonna go ahead and solo this. Okay, so first off, I'm going to kind of uh, explain quantize, pretty much self-explanatory. Whatever note you have selected via lassoing or hitting control A to select all notes, it will be quantized. When you hit the apply button, it will be quantized to whatever this value is. Now you can also do a percent of that value, and then you can also do ticks. Now ticks is something that is I really highly recommend. What that will do is it will slightly make your note not start exactly on it will basically dequantize your notes by a very very small amount and by doing that you really give your notes a more human feel but be careful with this because if you're doing this like let's say on a bass line and you're using a monophonic instrument if one note overlaps the other note the note below it will not play because again it's monophonic so if it's being triggered when the first note is still playing even by a very hair amount, that note will not play the following note. I use this on almost every MIDI clip, unless I'm going very specific. I, I put this between uh, 10 and 20 and I hit apply. And what I'll do is I'll put the MIDI clip in a loop and I'll just loop it and I'll he keep hitting apply and get little tiny small variations. Each time I hit apply, I'll get a different variation. And then when I find the one that really has that emotional punch to it that really has that character I'm done and so quantize is very very uh, underutilized everybody just sets up their MIDI and just quantize it and, and just that's that's it but there's very slight variations that if you if you add those to your MIDI clips you're gonna give your music a lot more character it's gonna all of a sudden come and have more life you know that's quantize now pitch is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, I use this a lot in most DAWs. You can hit shift arrow up, shift arrow down, and you will transpose your note one octave. Um, that is really, really valuable. Very, very handy when you want to like invert a chord, for example. But with this, what you can do is just tick this to 12, and that's 12 semitones, which is an octave, or you can hit minus 12. And the great thing about this is you can double click this and type in a value. And then let's say I have this note highlighted here. If I hit apply, it's going to transpose it up an octave. And then, of course, I can control Z and that will reverse that. So when you have maybe some chords in here or something um, and you want to maybe invert that chord, you can highlight the note and then uh, either minus 12 or plus 12, depending on if you're doing a first or second inversion or whatever you're doing. Very handy to just simply hit apply because I... I really miss that shift up arrow, shift down arrow. I love that. I love inverting my notes. It's very, very quick. But And so Reason doesn't have that, which is a little bit discouraging, but you can still do it with this uh, the pitch panel here. It's just by hitting one button, you can highlight your note. And as long as you keep this at 12 or minus 12, uh, it's a really easy way to invert your chords with the press of a button. And then, of course, you can randomize your notes, which I don't know why you would do that. Again, Sometimes you can throw paint at the wall and something will really start shining. And that's, I guess, again, you could create random variation and maybe land on your feet with a really good hook. Who knows? That's pitch. Now, note velocity, this is another one I highly recommend you use. Um, 
what I recommend is like if you're doing a hi-hat pattern or a bass line, something where there's a lot of notes involved, by default, if you paint the notes in, it's going to give you a default velocity. I believe it's either 70 or 75 percent. I don't remember the exact default velocity, but basically, long story short, all your notes will have the same velocity. You don't want that because when you play it, when a human being plays a piano, they don't hit the keys the exact same velocity every time. There's always variation in there. So what I recommend is highlighting all your notes um, and then going using a random. Now I like 16%, anywhere from 12 to 20%. You can go even higher. Um, just hit random and hit apply. And again, what I recommend is playing your loop over and over and just keep hitting apply until you get just that right uh, that right feel you know a lot of times with a fast attack on your leading note if you maybe bring the velocity down a little bit it's gonna it's gonna make your MIDI clip have a little bit more of an emotional impact or if you maybe bring up the velocity bring bring up the velocity it will make it have more of a you know uh, more of a dramatic impact so you can really play with the emotion of your notes via the velocity settings so I highly recommend um, highlighting them and and going I, I like 16 hitting apply a couple times and you can see those velocities right down there at the bottom of the screen are changing let's go ahead and listen to this again now of course you can also alter your velocity by hand using the pen tool for example, I'm going to bring the velocity of this second note way, way down just to see if that, because it will come in very quietly in a very calm way and that will really add to the emotion of that pad sound. Let's go ahead and play that. So it comes in very, very slow. So again, variation is everything. If you have everything locked on the grid and everything the same velocity, your music's going to sound robotic and it will lack emotion. So it's very important to use the velocity. Um, on to note length. Uh, this again, I don't really use it very much, but if you need to make a bunch of notes the same length, there you go. Very handy. It's fixed. It's add. It's subtract. Um, legato, if you use legato, what you can do is you can uh, overlap your notes. Like So let's say I highlight all these and then I uh, hit apply. It will add a, an, a legato of 1.0 so what is that a quarter quarter note or something I don't know I don't know I don't really use this as much but this is a good way to uh, get that legato overlapping of your notes the legato adjustment if you're getting maybe your bass notes or maybe some monophonic and some of your notes aren't playing because the note before it is slightly overlapping it because you have made variations this is a very good way to remedy that is highlight all the notes and then make sure side by side is clicked hit apply and what that will it will make sure that none of your notes overlap which is i which is very very important if you're using a monophonic instrument monophonic meaning only one note can play at a time so if you have the first note overlapping the second note the second note will not play um, so that's a very important thing that now I could see using that um, and that's the legato uh, scale tempo this is another really useful one um, because a lot of DAWs have it where you can you can double the length of your note you can you know half the length of your note or you can double you know that's a very handy thing um, and that's that's what you can do right here let's see I highlight all these notes um, I can go double that will shrink them in half I hit double it will shrink them in half again or if I hit half it's gonna double the length of them so that's a really quick way to do that and then of course you can uh, this is scaling them by 50% and then you can do I, I recommend leaving this at 50 so yeah again that's scale tempo a really good way to double or half the length of your MIDI data very quickly with the touch of a button. Uh, there's alter notes. Now alter notes, again, this is random. You can highlight these notes and just keep hitting apply and it will just randomly alter your notes, randomly alter them. Again, if you just paint a bunch of notes in here and hit that a bunch of times and bring it up to like 70%, so it will alter the heck out of them and then just keep looping it and keep hitting apply eventually you'll you'll probably end up with a hook or something so that's alter notes again a very random setting I don't use that too much reverse now this one's new reverse is a new one uh, in reason nine this will work for automation as well as MIDI notes you simply hit apply it will reverse your notes easy easy does it you know so um, 
And then I believe if you hit here, it will uh, reverse notes graphically, include note length. Okay, so again, you know, play with that, figure it out. You can that will basically reverse them, but keep the same length of your clip, I guess. I'm not really sure. Automation cleanup. This is again. This is basically the same thing that you'll see up on your options here under your preferences. Let's say you automate this guy right here. Edit automation. There we go. I'll give it a little automation lane, and then you go in here with your pin tool and you go crazy with some automation. You just you set this to like uh, 64 notes, let's say, and just just go crazy with your automation. It's like, oh my god, oh my goodness, that's some crazy automation. What you can do is make sure this is on maximum and then hit apply. And what it will do is it'll take a bunch of those points away. Again, I, I don't really use this very much because it basically, this is going to, if you just have your default set to maximum, it's going to give you maximum automation cleanup. So um, again, I don't really use this, but it is handy to have. Extract note, note lane. Now this is very, very uh, powerful and useful tool right here. So in order to see this at work, what we're going to have to do is uh, open up some drum MIDI right here. Let's go ahead and open that up. In now this extract notes to lanes. This is a very handy, powerful uh, thing that a lot of people don't know about, and this is basically used for drum MIDI. Um, and that's I believe that's all it works on. I could be wrong, but. But now normally when you're painting up your drums, you know, you got your, your, your kick drum and your snare and you're, you're, you're kind of painting everything in here and it's all on one MIDI clip. But you can explode this, use the explode uh, command and hit either duplicate or move. Duplicate will give you more MIDI than you need. I recommend using move. And if you click move, what this will do is you can see that uh, if I close this down, and open this up it has given me my drum pattern on six separate MIDI lanes and it has uh, muted the original here and so uh, that is super cool see and so that's extract notes to lanes very powerful to use that for your uh, your MIDI data for your drum loops um, and what I what I like about that is by putting them on separate lanes, what you can do is when you stretch that out, it's basically like blocks. You can mute each individual clip, get a lot of uh, variations in your drum loops, you know, kind of mute certain things for a couple of bars, like mute a hi-hat for a couple bars or mute a kick drum or, you know, something like that. So it's a very useful tool. But um, yeah, that's the tool window. There it is right there. The five panels I use the most is quantize for slight variations, uh, pitch for inverting chords, note velocity, randomizing the pressure of your notes, scale tempo for halving or doubling your MIDI loops, and then extract notes to lanes for all your drum grooves, put them on separate MIDI lanes so you can mute them for variation. So that's the F8 panel. Again, very underutilized and a very powerful tool here in Reason 9.1. Give your music some variation to start. You don't want them always to bang at the exact same time right on the grid. You want to get slight variations in there. And again, set it up on loop, play through it, and hit apply a couple times until you get that real that feel you want to the MIDI clip. Make sure that MIDI clip feels good to you. You can always control Z, start it over, save your project often say variations of your projects, and uh, keep going. Give me a thumbs up, a like. Please subscribe to the channel. We're going to have more stuff coming up on Reason 9.1. We're going to be starting a, a beginner series on music theory. It's going to be coming up next month, but make sure and subscribe so you can get note of that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week.